listen to this. This is from Dr. Chalmers. I took this quote from Insight Magazine. From all parts of the body, messages are sent to the brain along a series of nerve cells. Recently, it has been discovered that a small growth appears on the end of the sending fiber of the nerve cell each time a thought action is repeated. Thus it enlarges so that it becomes easier to repeat that same thought or action. The sobering thought then is that every thought, feeling, or act repeated is producing physical and chemical changes in our nerve pathways, either to bless or to curse us when these changes have been strongly established. I don't know if you get the, the interesting part about this, but the way your body is made is we're made of nerves, of course, and tissues and cells. And, but let me show you how the nerve cells basically look like, kind of. So you have the nerve and you have the nerve cell. And the nerve cell, they're basically kind of, I'll make it very rough here. So we have here the nerve cell with the dendrites and then they have little growth like this. Okay, so let's say this is a nerve cell. And now you can look at this in a book of anatomy physiology. And from what Dr. Chalmers is saying that they have discovered, it would seem that at the ending of these nerve cells, there is growth. And this has to do with your action, your words, and basically those little dendrites, that's what they're showing. They're showing growth. I find it very fascinating because I believe that this is a representation of what Jeremiah was saying in chapter 17, verse 1, if you remember. Why don't we read it again? Jeremiah 17, verse 1, where he talks about on the horn of your altar. Let's say, it says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altar. For you remember the blood was put only on the horns of the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering. I just find it fascinating that physically now, and I know Dr. Chalmers is not talking here about spiritual nerves, he's talking about physical. And he says, from all part of the body, messages are sent to the brain along a series of nerve cells. This is the cell, the dendrites, the way they kind of look like. And basically, they have extension. And on those extensions, it would seem that they have found that there is some growth there, which is very, very fascinating, I find. Now, and as we look more at the electrical measurement of the membrane, remember, I read this quote. We're going to read it again. Testimony, volume 3, page 138-39, very fascinating quote. God endowed man with so great vital force that he has withstood the accumulation of disease brought upon the race in consequence of perverted habits and has continued for 6,000 years. This fact of itself is enough to evidence to us the strength and electrical energy that God gave to man at his creation. It took more than 2,000 years of crime and indulgence of base passion to bring bodily disease upon the race to any great extent. If Adam, this is the very strong quote that I want you to remember, if Adam at his creation had not been endowed with 20 times as much vital force as men now have, the race with their present habit of living in violation of natural law would have become extinct. 20 times more energy than we have now. And she wrote that testimony number three, so it must have been around the 1800, 1900 era. And again, those little dendrites that I have showed you there, the nerve cells, they're not the nerves, they're the nerve cells, we're told that these have varied, this is from a book of anatomy physiology, two striking features of neurons are their highly developed ability to generate and conduct electrical messages called nerve impulse remember the nerve impulse and their limited ability to regenerate now there is a potential of electricity calculation in the body which is at the level of the muscle and the nerve tissue and here is what the electrical charge comes from it comes from the nerve impulse and we're told that we have kind of a battery in our body, a pump, I should say, a sodium-potassium pump, 
and those of you who are interested to know more, you can research that. But we are told that this pump and the operation of the pump require the expenditure of energy from ATP. I don't know if you know what is ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate, and this gives the energy to the body. It gives the light to the body. The active transport of sodium and potassium ion is unequal. Thus, is three sodium ions are actively transported out for every two potassium ion actively transported in. So it's a kind of a traveling between the pump of sodium and potassium, and it's not that difficult to understand. I will not go to all the details, but my point is this. What they have calculated now, that electrical measurement of a polarized membrane indicate a voltage of about 70 millivolt abbreviately MV, which is one over a thousand volt. A little battery, like to make, for example, a remote control or something, could be 1.5 volt. We're functioning on millivolt, which is one over a thousand volt. Very small energy. So that's a millivolt is thousand, sorry. This is very important because it says, since positive charges predominate outside, the inside of the membrane is said to be 70 millivolt less positive than the outside. Thus is the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt. And so that's why they're doing in this research with that palm there is they're basically proving that there is electricity in the body. So, the electrical measurement indicate that the inside of the membrane of a muscle or a nerve tissue, what it does is it becomes plus 30 millivolt once it's activated with respect to the outside. And the potential inside the membrane then goes from minus 70 millivolt, so this is the change of electricity that they have discovered, millivolt, it goes from minus 70 millivolt to zero here, so minus 70 to zero to 30 millivolt. That's how they calculate the electricity. Now, this is just a proposal. You don't have to go for it. But my proposal is that God has endowed at creation man 20 times with vital force more than we have today. Could it be that if God had endowed man with 20 times more, Adam and Eve were really running on 600 millivolt? I don't know, it's just a proposal. I'm not sure if it's true, but I just thought it was very fascinating when I read that and this quote from Sister White where she says, God and no man at creation with 20 times as much vital force as man now has. So the vital force at creation, she combines those words with the electrical current, the electrical energy. So I'm just proposing that, that now man, when activated, his membrane can give up to 30 millivolt and Adam and Eve were running on 600. Could it be that this is why we're so sick today? I don't know. That's a proposal. We could maybe do a thesis or research on that and prove it. And that's why, my friend, that's why now when we look at the mind of man, which has been created upright, that's why now man is upside down. That's why we're upside down. We're not only upside down mentally, but we're upside down physically and upside down spiritually. And that's why we need a savior. I don't believe that Hinduism offering fruits and vegetable and flower will do it. And I don't believe Buddhism also offer fruits and flowers, by the way. Muslim, they believe they can go directly to God, the Creator. But that's not what the Bible and the sanctuary teaches us. No man can approach the Father but to the Savior. So this is what now we're going to discover. The brain nerve under attacks. I hope that this gives you a little idea of what physically has happened to our body. But I'm going to show you now what has happened to our brain nerve. How true our brain nerves are under attack. And now we have been separated from God. Man became the habitation of demons. Remember we were created to be a holy temple. Now we have become the habitation of demons. Men's faculty were perverted, intellect, reason, conscience. Men's lower nature rules the higher, just like the card, upside down. Men's sinful mind is characterized by selfishness, 
man inherits a sinful nature. So this, my friend, is what has happened to these beautiful, beautiful brain nerves that were created to, meet, to be communicating directly with God. But now, this is the way we are since sin came into this earth. We are upside down, and there is nothing we can do about it to change anything unless we accept our Savior. He has done it. He has come to this earth. He has lived a perfect life in this body of ours. And remember the true nature of man. While his character was perfect, he had the same passion, appetite, and desire that we have, yet without sin, because never once he gave in through his mind to sin. That is special. I would like to come to this point where that happens. I'm praying about that, and I'm asking my Savior every day to remove the records and to heal my brain nerves by eating properly, using only natural remedies. Maybe people would say, you're so legalistic. Hey, so be it. I believe that it makes a difference in our life. I believe that not watching television for 25 years has made a difference in my brain. And I believe for people who are, for example, addicted to alcohol or drugs or pornography, they need abstinence. Don't try to teach to do less. The Heavenly Father teaches us very clearly in the Bible that it's not just a matter of tapering down. Remember when uh, Jesus told Mary Magdalene, he says, go and sin no more. He didn't say go and taper down. He says, go and sin no more. She had no choice. What about the man by the pool? Many times the Lord told the people he healed, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing happen to you. They were possessed with demons. That did not happen by accident. You don't just get possessed by the demons by accident. You open up your mind to the five senses, to demons to enter. And literally, when a person drinks alcohol, read it in Ministry of Healing, the prophet says that demons enter into the being. It does. You've seen people under the effect of alcohol and drugs. I speak about it very often because I deal with homeless people and I deal with alcoholic and drug addicts. Not homeless people are all alcoholic and drug addicts, but many of them suffer from mental illness as well, which sometimes, many times, it's more than mental illness. It's spiritual battles. So here we have it, man's sinful mind is characterized by selfishness, where before it was love, now it's selfishness, and man inherits a sinful nature. So we saw with Adam and Eve, when they were pure, they were pure in the mind and in the body. They were not affected or infected at any level. But once they sinned, they became affected and infected at the level of their mind and their flesh. Their mind being the faculty of the mind, and their flesh, which is the passion, the appetite, and the desire. And they had to be much more careful now with their eyes and their ears and their nose and their mouth because now they had a tendency, a bend to evil. That tendency and bend to evil is the record that sin has left in us. This is what the Lord is planning to remove, the character of Satan, the knowledge of evil, bend to evil. You'll see the prophet has 13 definitions to tell, to tell us about what is that knowledge of evil? What are those records? So as we look at the Word of God, we see in Mark 5, 2, 6 to 13. I encourage you to read it for yourself, but I'll just give you what is happening here. Mark 5, Jesus comes out of the boat, and there is a man that comes out of a tomb with an unclean spirit. He's possessed. So Jesus seems him far off, and he... The man comes and he run toward Jesus and he worship him and he cries to Jesus, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that you torment me not. And then Jesus says, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And then Jesus says, What is thy name? And the man says, My name is Legion, for we are many. And you know the rest of the story. There was some swine feeding around there. And uh, Jesus, like the demon, asked to be cast into the swine. By the way, swine can swim, apparently. But here, Jesus cast those demons into the swine, and they all drowned, the Bible says. They were choked into the sea. There were 2,000 of them. 2,000 that was in this man. From being an habitation for God, a temple for God, he is man in the time of Christ, 2,000 years ago and even before that, 
men were possessed of 2,000 demons. If you don't think that demon possession is real, you are prepared for some surprises. It is very real. You can see it not only in India and in Haiti, and you can see it in Canada and the United States. A lot of people are possessed and they're walking like if they are normal, but they definitely have unclean spirit. Chained to his car as captive. This is what has happened to us. The deception of sin had reached its height. All the agencies for depraving the souls of men had been put into operation. The Son of God, looking upon the world, beheld suffering and misery. With pity, he saw our man had become victim of satanic cruelty. He looked with compassion upon those who were being corrupted, murdered, and lost. They had chosen a ruler who chained them to his car as captive. Bewailed and deceived, they were moving on in gloomy procession toward eternal ruin, to death in which is no hope of life, towards night to which comes no morning. Such was the prospect upon which the world's Redeemer looked. What a spectacle for infinite purity to behold. Now, listen to the solution to our problem. I found that solution, by the way, this was from Desire of Ages, page 36. They tell me if it's not the solution for this problem. We have great victories to gain and a heaven to lose if we do not gain them. The carnal heart must be crucified, for its tendency is to moral corruption, and the end thereof is death. Nothing but the life-giving influence of the gospel can help the soul. She says, pray that the mighty energies of the Holy Spirit with all their quickening, recuperative, and transforming power may fall like an electric shock on the palsy-stricken soul, causing every nerve to thrill with new life, restoring the whole man from his dead, earthly, sensual state to spiritual soundness. I'm giving you the solution before I go on with this part, because this part is pretty scary. But the solution is the gospel of the sanctuary message, the Holy Spirit being born again and being filled with the Spirit daily, filling the mind with the Word of God, praying, meditating, fasting. This is the solution that is given to us here. Now, listen to what happened when people fall prey to it, Satan. One of the most deplorable effects of the original apostasy was the loss of man power of self-control. Only as, as this power is regained can there be real progress. The body is the only medium to which the mind and the soul are developed for the upbuilding, upbuilding of character. Hence it is the, that the adversary of souls directs temptation to the enfeebling and degrading of the physical powers. His success here means the surrender to evil of the whole being. The tendency of our physical nature, unless under the dominion of a higher power, will surely work ruin and death. Satan, this is from Counsel and Diet and Food I just read from, this is Ministry of Healing, satanic agencies took possession of man. The bodies of human beings made for the dwelling place of God became the habitation of demons. The senses, the nerve, the organs of men were worked by supernatural agencies in the indulgence of the vilest lost. The very stem of demon was impressed upon the countenance of man. Human faces reflected the expression of the legion of evil which with men were possessed. This is the same area where we're talking about this man. And this is Minister of Healing, page 142. Imagination and nerve have been under the control of demons. So this is why, what we're living in today. We're living with people who are basically taken over by the power of darkness. If Jesus, 2,000 years ago, was facing it, how much more today?